Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome back to Marginal Gains. Now today we're going to look at the top three tips that will move you from a noob to a medium player. And it'll also give you the fundamentals to potentially go even higher. So if you're intrigued, let's go. Now, if you're a good 0ED player, it may be that you already know these things or that you understand them instinctively. However, it's always nice to you know that a theory backs up your gut feeling. So watch on and see if you recognise these tips. So taking them to account will definitely improve you from being beaten all the time to winning some games. And it will also ensure that you have all the fundamentals in place to become an expert. So, enough teasing. What are the three things you're going to need to know about? In short, they are number one, always be training. Number two, be efficient in collecting your resources. And number three, keep an eye on the map. Now, those are just headings and a little bit cryptic. So what do they mean in practice? Well, the first two are fundamentally about growing your population. And these two things are the ways to ensure that that happens as quickly as possible. So let's look at it in a little more depth. Now, firstly, collect loads of resources is a rather obvious point, And so we'll come to it in more depth a little bit later on. But what I'm going to focus on now is housing. Now you need to constantly have sufficient spare population capacity to ensure that you are never stopped from producing soldiers and citizens. When this happens, it's called being housed, and it's a common error made by new starters and even some more experienced players. When the population limit icon in the top left starts flashing, that's when you know that you've managed to make this mistake. The other important consideration to make is having the right number of places from which you can train troops. Now you'll notice that I didn't put a lower limit on that, as it's important to not only make sure that you don't have too few buildings, but also ensure that you don't have too many. A simple rule is that if you're constantly training from all your buildings and have large amounts of resources, particularly wooden food, going spare, then you've got too few buildings. However, if you don't have enough resources, then don't just build a barracks or whatever for later. That's just wasted resources that could be used for troops in the buildings you currently have. That said, the most important thing I can mention at this point is that you must have a barracks in place before you start the transition from the village phase to the town phase, as otherwise that's 30 seconds that you can't produce anything at all, and not producing for even a second is a cardinal sin. Having established the non-resource related reasons that you may not grow your population as quickly as you'd like, let's focus on the big one, which is just not having resources themselves. So here are some tips to ensure that you get these as quickly as possible. Now firstly, you want to make sure that the right citizens are collecting the right resources. Now women and men are comparable when they're gathering wood, so although men are slightly quicker, you also have to bear in mind that women don't cost any wood to train, so they've already effectively saved you 50 of that resource simply by training them instead of a soldier. This makes it a little bit more murky with that resource. If we go move away from wood though, the divides are pretty clear. Women are better where food is concerned, while men rule the mining of stone and metal. That said, there's a bonus that's not known by everyone, and that's that women offer a 10% gather rate bonus to men within 10 metres, presumably because the man is showing off by working hard. This means that a metal mine of 24 men actually gathers less quickly than one of 23 men and one woman. Secondly, your walking distance from the resource that you're gathering to the drop site should be as short as possible, and keep building extra storehouses if they're needed. The extra wood that you'll spend is totally worth it, as it leads to you collecting your resources so much more quickly. Another great thing that you can look at is pretty obvious, but it actually does get overlooked so often that I find it unbelievable. Simply don't have any idle time. Your citizens should always be collecting resources, building things or fighting. If they're not doing one of those, then they're a waste of resources, so get them to work. Now if you want to find idle citizens, then you should click the button with the sleeping man image that's to the lower right of the minimap. If this is gold, then you've got people doing nothing. Alternatively, you can use the full stop key to select idle citizens, and if you want to select every single one of them together, then press Alt full stop. Now another important thing to bear in mind that new players frequently overlook is that you should only be collecting relevant resources. This means you shouldn't be mining for stone in phase 1 unless it's critical for your strategy, and you're going to use that resource. If there's no particular building or soldier, like slingers for instance, that requires that you get stone, then don't collect it, and the same applies to metal. This is just wasting time that you could be using your soldiers and citizens to collect something useful. And the final tip that I have for you today is ensuring that you know what's happening on the map. Now this is critical to your chances of winning, so you should scout as soon as possible and use any mechanism that you can to improve your vision of the map. And there are a number of reasons that good vision is essential, but the main two are A, 
to see where you want to expand to. You don't get huge vision at the start of the game, so you should scout as soon as possible. Where you place your barracks, your drop sites, the upgrades you get, they can all depend on the map and the location of resources. So don't build things blindly. Make sure that you take the map into consideration when you're locating any buildings. And B, you also want to be able to protect yourself from rushes. So use scouts, watchtowers, anything you can to give yourself the best view of the map to keep an eye on your enemy. What you can't see definitely can harm you in Zero AD. And equally, if you want to harass your opponent, then knowing where his berry gathering women are likely to be, or his best wood line that may be undefended is, gives you critical intelligence that can make your attacks much more effective. And so the time comes again to say goodbye for another week. However, before I go, I'd just like to inform you all of my new series that starts next week called Noob Analysis. Now basically, I'll be analysing how well newer players play and advise you on how they can improve. And the three things that we mentioned here are going to be pretty fundamental to that. But just to reassure you, it won't only be about basics like this. We'll also be looking at faction-specific improvements that may be different depending on the opponent as well as the map. So if you'd like to have your games analysed and see where you can improve, then send the files to the email address on the screen and I look forward to hearing from you as well as seeing you in future for a little noob analysis as well as the other videos that I produce all the time. So, ciao for now.